I'm so hyped up that I just shot a video with Do or Die and Kanye West. Yeah. I wanted to call my mama like, mama, I did it. And when I started to call her number, I remember like she just died. It's gonna be good. All right, what's up everybody? My name is Brazil and welcome back to the podcast. Today is probably the most special episode I've done because all of you know me as a filmmaker and honestly, it all began with this guy right here, Morocco. Um, he is the first person to ever let me work on a professional film set. I must have been 14 years old, a freshman in high school when I first met him, you know, through some people I met on MySpace. <laughs> That's how long ago that was, huh? And, uh, and Morocco was so kind and he literally put me on the game. He's the one that, that showed me what real music videos are like, real productions. He let me intern for him. I mean, we'll tell the story. I mean, there's, there's a lot to it. But basically, for those of you that are watching, my career in the professional music video world wouldn't have started if it wasn't for my relationship with Morocco. Wow. And that was, honor, like, that was like 20 years ago. And, um, and now we're here at the grand opening of his restaurant, Harold's, here in Atlanta. And, uh, and there's so much for us to cover in this conversation. I just wanted to welcome you guys. And, and bro, thank you for being on the pod. Man, you already know, man. You already know. Rocco, man, first of all, I just want to tell you how grateful I am, for real. Why did you choose to allow me to be a part of your team when I was so young? What made you bring me on? Well, I don't know. I don't think I really thought about it too deeply. Sometimes you meet somebody and you want to help. It's not a common thing for me. <laughs> I don't, you probably about, one of the only two or three filmmakers I've ever tried to pour into like I did, you know, with you. You were inquisitive and you was ambitious, like you was trying to do it all on your own. And it was kind of like, you know, you was doing my homie's video and he knew I was a filmmaker. My friends always want me to just shoot anything and everything, so I just refused to shoot anything for my friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so however he found you, he found you. Like, man, I'm going to get somebody to do my video, yeah. and then I'm going to beg Rock to just come oversee it. So that's how I ended up there. You right. know what I'm saying? But I was expecting somebody that just was like trash, and you know what I mean? But I could see, I could see the intelligence, and I could see the ambition of you trying to do what you were trying to do. So that's what I was just like, man, let me help him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I'm a one man army too, most of the time, especially back then. I was just like right. running gun, gorillas, just me with a camera. And I'm like, man, I need somebody to collaborate with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that was one of the healthiest things I learned to do with you is collaborate with a fellow filmmaker on an indie level. Because when I did professional movies and videos or whatever like that, I went to film school. So I always think about all of the positions. Right. Like and a so DP, it's all a producer, everything, whatever, right? all yeah. the bells and whistles. And I kind of only approached it like it's not a certain number of people, a certain amount of equipment, then it's not a real production taking place. Right. And as we evolve to right now to where we got tiny cameras re recording us right now in a car, lights are... There's like an $8 light, yeah. <laughs> small as hell and can just fit up yeah. in nooks and crannies and this shit looks as good as what Red was looking like 10, 15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's just all Technology. That's kind of the background story to us, too, because we shooting with mini DV tapes. Yeah. I, I know y'all don't know what mini DV tapes are, but like... Back in the day, we had the DVX and the HVX. Oh, yeah. the DVX, yeah, the DVX was, that was, when that came, it was on. But when the HVX came, right. this is when the term was new for high definition. You didn't have high definition TVs or anything like that. They came out with cameras that were HD cameras. Yeah. And basically... HD was like the revolutionary uh, tool in filmmaking that get us to the point that we are right now. Because everything before that was film. Right, it was either film or like bullshit home videos. Or terrible. Yeah. Yeah, there was videotape, <laughs> which which mini DVs were. Like they were little mini DV tapes. They were, right. they were a little bit better quality and like camcorders used to be back in the day, but they was good quality though yeah. um, for, for our time. It was dope because we come from completely different cultural backgrounds. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I come from Chicago, the hood, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? Um, you come from Brazil, 
Right. Well traveled, been different spots in the states, and so on and so forth. And the you know skater culture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I pull up from over on the block, smoking weed, kicking it with my guys, and I go edit over this dude house up in Evanston. Yeah. Evanston is a little suburb of uh, Chicago. Of Chicago, and um, he had a little crib over there. His crib ended up just being our studio. We lived out that fucking room, yeah. bro. Like, you know he what I'm saying? Edit and I would try to skate my rail in between the editing sessions. Yeah, he'd be yeah. running outside skating and shit. I had kids early and shit, so sometimes I had to babysit the kids and the kids would be out running around the house with your little sisters and everything, you yeah. know what I'm saying, while we edit and shit. And yeah. Yeah, you, you just look back at it and it was just so pure, man. It's just like, you know, um, the filmmaking process at that point. And I remember being on set, what really tripped me out is that it was different than learning in theory. I felt like in school, it was a lot about talking about the idea of film, mm -hmm. but on set, you're really doing it. Mm -hmm. You see real world situations mm -hmm. where like locations may not work out or something's happening with the lighting or the artist. And, and what I loved about that opportunity was it, it was a practical filmmaking. Mm -hmm. I got, to, I got to hang out with you when you were hiring the crew. Mm. I got to hang out with you when you were negotiating with the label. We were making treatments together. Yeah. We were doing edits. And yeah. I remember, you know, I've told this story on my podcast a bunch of times. I don't know if you know this. I, I, I've mentioned you many times oh, okay, on my podcast. Okay. And my audience, so y'all get to see me now. I'm yeah. real. I really exist. Huh? Uh, I, told this I, ain't this, I, I ain't this alter ego and shit. I ain't Tyler Durden. Yeah, yeah I would... Uh, I would, I would tell people that, you know, I started out doing behind the scenes videography for you, right? Like doing the making of the videos. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got the footage of the music video and recut the video. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time you were like, no, let's go with your edit for the thing. Oh, yeah. You proved yourself to me. You, it was like an apprenticeship. It was like yeah. I had you in a little box. But I knew I knew there was other potential inside of you. It wasn't like, you know, I, I just wanted to keep you in the box. But I said, OK, he can do this behind the scenes shit, but he's not ready for Right. The big shit, yeah. Right. That's okay. So that's dope because we we ran into each other at a dope period of time. This is like uh, the '05 through '07 era of uh, hip hop. Yes. Um, Chicago. So, uh, Common, Kanye, Lupe, they all killing the scene. Um, just before that, you had a slight resurgence of Do or Die, which it had it back in the '90s and and Twista, Twista was on the scene real heavy. Chicago hip hop was lit. Kanye broke the scene open, 03, going into 04. Really like his name was getting hot before um, as a producer. He was like a ghost, like I was, I was waiting to run into him around every corner, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I had just uh, came out of film school. I ain't try to come out of film school. I couldn't afford to finish that shit. Um, Columbia College in Chicago. So I was, uh, like what you just said, um, as far as book read, like I had went to school, I knew what the positions were, I knew, you know, some of the camera principles, some of the lighting principles, some of the editing principles, but in school form, we'll do real projects, but right. they weren't organic. They were kind of real sterile. It was like, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. We were doing stuff or whatever, and I was always just, I'll just take my camera to the hood. Like, I remember I took a 16 millimeter Bolex camera. Mm -hmm. This is like the ancient shit that you see in the movies that you yeah. crack open and you put film inside and you just record. Right. And it doesn't have sound sync to it. When you pull the shit out to edit it, you need a razor blade to splice it open. You're literally like splicing and put cutting. the shit on spools and, no and use a little moviola to to just watch what your images look like. And then there was a separate reel for sound. It was it was some crazy shit. But in Colombia, they made us go through that process. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I always I know like because I went to school for film and I experienced that. It gave me a different layer of filmmaker than the other run and gun people that I ran into because right. I, I knew where film came from. Watching history of cinema and taking all the classes. I was always kind of a movie geek before I went to film school. But back then, technology wasn't like it is right now. You couldn't pull up all the shit on your phone and just know what this is and how to do this and how to do that. It was like a huge puzzle that would take you sitting in libraries for hours or combing through archives or, it was impossible to yeah. get certain amount of information just, you yeah, know. Yeah, literally I mean? look it up in a book and you find the right page. And, and still. And still, yeah. It wasn't organic, you know what I'm right. saying? So um, anyway, I couldn't afford film school. They kicked me out because I couldn't afford to keep going. I had a great experience at Columbia, but whatever, I'm out on the street. I'm shooting comedians, uh, B. Cole. I used to film B. Cole and everybody that was 
part of the Be Cold branch. Lil Rail, who's a dope ass comedian right now. I remember filming him in the South Suburbs, like probably when he was first starting. He's probably like, wow. Yeah, he was a couple years older than me, so I don't yeah, know. He's blown up now. Oh yeah, yeah, but he was just like, yeah. he was just like a little dude. Wildcat was just a little dude. Wow. Um, it was Wildcat, Lil mm -hmm. Rail, Dion Cole. Michi, Dion Cole. I put Dion Cole in like. In the higher video, right? Yeah. Before the higher video, Dion Cole is in my college videos like really? where I used to just like play around it I, no. I gotta find the shit if I even still got it yeah but Dion Cole like he my dog we don't get along he mad at me and shit but you know he he a rich successful dope ass yeah. actor comedian that I'm super proud of no matter what right but uh with me once I wasn't in school to be productive I felt like I just had to pull out the camera and just shoot anything mm. Inspiration, shout out to Cootie. Um, Cootie, who uh, just did that recent uh, Kanye documentary. Genius, uh, genius. Genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jesus, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was something like that. Yeah, that, that cold ass Kanye documentary. Cootie used to have this shit called Channel Zero that used to just come on um, late night on Channel 19, public access television. Yeah. And it'd be just like unpredictable shit. Like, you might see Scarface, you might see Two Shorts, you might see Snoop Dogg, and you might see local Chicago artists just moving around the scene and so on and so forth and shit. Like, film was the untapped um, art in Chicago right. in terms of black culture. Right. There weren't too many people filming anything. There was a lot of black musicians. Yeah, but film-wise, yeah. it was just a handful of people. You know what I'm saying? So you had Cootie, and there was, uh, there was Channel Zero, it was Danny, um, it was a couple other people, but... They had this dope ass shit, Channel Zero, and they was just filming shit. And just film always intrigued me. It was like capturing life. You get a camera and you can capture parts of life and, you know, shit yeah. like that. So I was just like, man, I just had the inkling to be a filmmaker. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how long ago it started, but I went to Columbia like when I was 16 and I did summer classes there before I ever graduated high school. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, so I was trying to get into film way before. Yeah. But anyway, fast forward, I'm in film now. Hip hop is blowing up. I shot my first video with my dog, Ski Franchise, who's also my partner in Harold's that helped me put together this Harold's chicken that we're putting together right now. Nice, shout um, out to Ski. Shout out to Ski. My first video, man. First investor, you feel me? Like, mm -hmm. believing in what I could do. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because I go to film school to be a filmmaker, but I end up shooting music videos as a default. I'm out of film school. I'm up watching Uncut late at night. Uncut used to be on BET. Um, I just seen somebody that let me use one of his cars for my Rick Jilla video that used to be on Uncut. Shout out Rick Jilla. I did yeah. this video called On The What. It was like a... It was an uncut classic, you know what I'm saying? That was um, a classic. I'm telling you, yeah. 50 Cent talked about it before, it yeah. inspired him and shit too. But anyway, I'm working a dead end job. I'm working at a telemarketing place, like doing nothing, being boring as fuck. While I'm doing that, I get the inspiration by staying up all night watching uncut. Like shooting a movie at that point is just like, Mission Impossible never gonna happen. Yeah, it's, it's not so enough. much logistics, so much budget, and it's yeah, yeah. To happen to especially make an back movie. then. Yeah, especially yeah, back yeah. then, it was so expensive and all that type of shit. But anyway, I'm watching these music videos, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just uncut. It's just people, just amateurs with cameras shooting bitches, shaking their ass <laughs> to the wor weakest songs and rap and shit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And I'm I'm smoking a and shit, and I'm up. It's just one of them nights I don't feel like going to sleep and shit. I'm just like. I could shoot a fucking video. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to shoot a fucking video. You know what I'm saying? So it might have been one of the first, yeah, it was the first like project projects I did outside of doing shooting comedians and all type of weird shit like that, abstract shit. I was just like, I'm going to shoot a fucking music video. Yeah. So I ended up talking to Ski. It took him probably a year, but, you know, he was doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? And he came up with the money and he trusted me. Uh, shit. And it was a big budget especially for my first fucking video. This is before Hire? Yeah, this, this is right before, well, this is the year before Hire. Wow. Um, this is 2003. So he come up with 15, about $15,000 or some shit like that. Yeah. And that was a huge budget for a first time video. It's huge sure. now, yeah. it's huge now. But back then, yeah. it was astronomical, you know what I'm saying? But. I came from a school that taught me the positions and you know what I'm saying? I ended up making a couple of acquaintances. Uh, shout out to 8-Ball Films, Ted Liga, uh, my boy Clark over there, Ed Cannon. I can't remember everybody, man, but 
that whole squad, A Ball Films, we was a little family. And then from me shooting my first music video with them, it ended up proving to them that I could shoot a music video of quality. Right. Uh, and when I say them, I mean Eight Ball Films, because they had access to all of the equipment and all the stuff I wanted to use. It was just a matter of using it. Right. So you showed them that you could do music videos with the ski. Yeah. And that's what yeah. positioned you to do the, the Kanye video. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I get a call. Um, I get a call two weeks. I don't even know if it was two weeks. Um, my mother passed. And um, I didn't, it, was, it was one of them times where I just had the phone off. I was just letting shit go to voicemail. I just wasn't answering no calls or nothing like that. And I turned my phone on. And um, it's my boy Ted calling me from 8-Ball. He's like, man, I know you're going through a lot right now, um, but we got this opportunity and it would kill me if I didn't tell you about it. Mm. I'm like, what's the opportunity? He like, um, you know uh, the rap group Do or Die? I'm like, yeah, I actually met one of them before, b -Lo. And he was just like, oh, that's dope, man. Uh, well, uh, it's this other guy on the song, Kanye. You ever heard of him? I'm like, hell yeah, yeah, I heard of Kanye. He buzzing like, it ain't right. nothing, you know what I'm saying? He just signed with Jay-Z. I was like, right before college dropout, I was like he, ramping up to Yeah, him. but like, uh, yeah. you know, like back then, we used to have like mixtapes and bootlegs. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my boys, I don't know how he got it or whatever, but we had heard a whole string of Kanye songs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they ain't even popular. Like, I can't even remember those songs. But yeah, I remember his mixtape before college dropout, yeah, the yeah, freshman yeah. adjustment or whatever. Yeah, all yeah, of that. Yeah. And I was uh -huh. just like, he was different as fuck. Yeah. He was different as fuck. It didn't blend into nothing I heard in Chicago and everything. And my boy was like, man, he about to be big. And I was like, man, shit, I don't know. I don't think he, you know what I'm saying? Next thing I know, right. he signed with The Rock. It, everything you hear about him is just huge. Just, you know what I'm saying? Phenomenal and shit. And um, we get all the way to this point. Uh, they sent me the treatment. I mean, they sent me the idea for the treatment that they were going to shoot in L.A. But for whatever reason, last minute, they didn't want to go to L.A. to shoot the video. They wanted to shoot in Chicago. Right. But they wanted it to have like a L.A. type of flair or feel to it. They didn't want it to look like a normal Chicago video. So they want like a nice house. And yeah, 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 yeah. And then when I tell you it was a niche, there was only one dude in Chicago doing videos at the time. Shout out my boy Chris Adams. Um, Chris Adams has shot Do or Die before. I think he has shot uh, Crucial Conflict before. But he was the only name that came up for shooting music videos in Chicago at the time. Right. And again... I didn't have the luxury of studying work. So it wasn't like you could go on YouTube and look at all the Chris Adams videos. Right. You would have to wait till you ran across it on TV or if somebody had a dub or right. a tape or something. Right, before TiVo or any of that. It was so just you didn't weird... catch it, you didn't catch it. Yeah. You just had to catch it real time or you didn't catch it or you right. need to have a physical VHS tape of everything. It was just weird timing. But yeah. I used to just hear of his work. Anyway, I shoot higher. Um, two weeks after my mother passed, and um, it was a real emotional moment and shit. Um, I remember, shout out to Kay. Kay, one of the only people who remember this moment. My mother had passed just two weeks before this, so I forgot that she passed. Like, completely forgot. Wow. This is the biggest day of my life. She done seen me do stuff before. I skipped over a whole movie that I shot. I don't yeah. know how I skipped that, but I shot this film, Get Together. I put Dion Cole in that. I put a lot of people in that. It starred B. Cole and um, my boy, uh, I can't remember his fucking name. And he's he my dog too. He a, he a dope ass comedian. But anyway, it started a whole bunch of comedians, everybody in it. Dion Cole right. up in it with a wig on and shit. Y'all, y'all try to go check out. It's it was Tubi before Tubi, like <laughs> it, a clean ass Tubi movie, cause it still look good now. It's shitting on Tubi movies right now. Wow. And we shot that with like the first HD camera ever. Um, Vericam, Panasonic. Vericam. I remember the Vericam. That's what shot Miami Vice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man, Vericam was the shit, cause it, yeah. it you could get a film look out of a video camera. And that was still like an eight thousand dollar camera. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ain't own it. I used to rent cameras forever and shit. But you were saying when you're doing higher, AK remembered that you said you almost forgot that your mom passed. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, 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 I'm so hyped up. I'm so hyped up that I just shot a video with Do or Die and Kanye West. Yeah. That I wanted to call my mama like, mama, I did it. Wow. And when I started to call her number, it, it, I remember like she just died and I started crying. It was just like a moment. Um, I'm glad I wasn't in front of everybody. We had just yelled rap. 
Kanye had just walked out. We starting to break down lights and everything. I walked back to the room and I'm, I'm, I'm hyped for a moment. I got a moment to myself all day. And I, I pick up the phone, old ass Nokia. This, this before they even flip, this just the brick Nokia phone. And um, I'm trying to call my mama and I realize she gone, you know what I'm saying? And Kay was the only one there, you know what I'm saying? And I think his brother Mojo, or it was somebody else right there too. And they just hugged me, you know what I'm saying? They told me to be straight and prayed with me and shook it off, wiped the tears off and shit, and you know what I'm saying? What a powerful moment. Man, bro. What a story. Oh man, it's First deep. of all, the fact that your mom passed and then that happened, it almost feels like it's like a gift sent from her. Oh, definitely. So, like I had just found out, I just found out my, um, my child's mother was pregnant with Rock, my son. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And my mother had just passed. Like it was all in that little stretch of time and everything. So I'm now, now I'm christened into shooting music videos. We're trying to put together the footage. I'm gonna put together the whole making of it. If I can get a hold to them tapes. What's up, Trackster? They say Trackster got the behind the scenes of Hire. Uh, Trackster, uh, yeah, Trackster produced Hire. I shot it, um, do a die, performed in it, and Kanye and everything. Oh, that's why Kanye was in it, but he didn't produce it. No, no. Oh wow, he usually doesn't do that. Like normally, well, he's only on track. Wait, wait, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how Traxta got it. He probably Traxta, co-produced it or something. He yeah, might have yeah. co-produced it, or yeah. it's, the, the album was majority Traxta and got all it. that. Yeah, but Kanye did get him like three songs on that album. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, Kanye did get him like three songs on that album. It was just a dope ass time to be in hip hop, man. Yeah. Like, and that, even on that shoot, like, um, I had my bump J, man. What up, bump? What up, Shake? I had my nigga Bump J up in there. He was like one of the only Southside people besides Tracks up in there. But then we had a uh, whole Crucial Conflict, Never, Cold Hard, uh, Wow, everybody was up in there. Pretty much all the Chicago hip hop legends were in that video. Oh man, and just so many yeah. just radio personalities and everybody was there, you know what I'm saying? It was just a lit um, situation. At the same time, Twister was blowing too. Yeah. Twister had just knocked out uh, Slow Jams with Jamie Foxx and the, the, the track with, with Kanye and yeah, Jamie yeah. Foxx and the Overnight Celebrity and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it was just a dope ass time for Chicago hip hop. It's like golden era of music. Oh, yeah. That era of music is some of my favorite. Oh, From man, like late bro. 90s to mid 2000s was the best. Man, bro. And like I, if you say, like my mama sent that video to me, my mama used to bump the shit out of Teddy Pendergrass. No shit. So that was a Teddy Pendergrass sample. Um, oh, wow. Hires latest greatest inspiration but it's from yeah it's from wow uh, so i was just like man so anyway i had to climb a whole bunch of hurdles to shoot the video because i was completely unknown right i did one video in inglewood in the hood with my dog um ski franchise and means dynasty that was their group um shot it on 57th and troop shout out 57th and troop shout out inglewood shout out to ming <laughs> shout out to ming my dog it was just a lot going on at that time in Chicago hip hop. And I felt like I got to get just dropped in the epicenter of doing it. I never intended to shoot music videos as a career, but now after I shot a video with Do or Die and Kanye, they just, everything started lining up. Yeah. I did a the second video for Do or Die called Around Here. Um, we put all the Chicago street gangs in it. It was a dope little concept and everything. Did I the with Malik? Yeah, with Malik Youssef park. speaking at the park and yeah. everything. Shout out Malik too. Malik is in a student film with me, uh, well, with him, starring him and Dion Cole. I gotta find that damn tape, man. It's B. Cole, Dion Cole, Malik Youssef up in there. Uh, might have one more person in there. Might be Wildcat up in there too. I gotta find that shit, dog. Anyway, I did a student project with them up in there. Ain't that fucking crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. So video shit going now. Um, I done shot around here. I did the Rick Jilla on the what. Now I'm technically a music video director because I done did more than one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward, I meet this little kid, <laughs> Brazil, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just playing around with a camera. Mm -hmm. And like, I needed a little, I needed a sidekick. I needed somebody to, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Be behind the scenes with me. Cause I'm really kind of like a, um, I can be a very um, introverted personality yeah. where I don't talk to people or associate with them if I don't have to. And I just kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, even me nowadays, I don't talk to many filmmakers. Yeah. I have more musician friends than filmmakers. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I understand yeah. that, yeah. And, and, and I don't know if it was just the filmmaker part or the Chicago part, whatever it was, I was just real closed yeah. off and shit. I was just like, man, I'm gonna holler at my dog, man. Uh, see what's up with him, man. So uh, 
I meet you. What project did you first come on to? It was the Trackster and Below video, Take It Slow. And then the ski franchise, he got that good. Because the ski franchise, one, the Traxxer video, I was doing behind the scenes. Okay. And I got to see how you put it together. I mean, we were up all night. I'm pretty sure I got home at like six in the morning yeah, the yeah, next yeah. day. And, and it was my first time also experiencing that. Like, oh, shoots are like 12, 14, 15 I hour days. I remember, shout out to uh, the 500 Cermak building. You used to be in the 500 Cermak building shooting all that shit with a... Uh Maestro them mm -hmm. over yeah. there next oh, door. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, Uncle Rick and everybody. Yeah, yeah. I forgot all about uh, Maestro, man. Maestro used to be part of Grimyville. Um, I, I see Maestro out in L.A. I, oh, uh, yeah, up, he came yeah. to a birthday party like four months ago. Are you a producer? What do you do now? He's producing and he's working. He's got a couple artists he's working oh, with. He's dope. got all kinds of different yeah, stuff. Tell, too. tell buddy, I said, what's up? So when I met you, I was shooting the video for uh, the cartel. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And then you brought me on to do behind the scenes on the Trackster video. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about that is that I got to see the real behind the scenes. I'm not talking about just while it's happening, but like hiring the crew, the shot list. Yeah. We were putting together a shot lists mm -hmm. and looking for storyboard artists. Yeah. And I was hitting up the message board saying, can yeah. anybody do storyboards yeah. for us? And, yeah. and and just to see how raw it is that you're literally putting it together. Man, you gotta put a clip with, uh, that's one of my favorite videos ever. Uh, Slow It Down, yeah. Trackster. Um, uh, we'll, put, we'll, we'll include the videos in the editor. Trackster's sure. legendary producer from Chicago, um, Southside, Pocket Town. Um, yeah, he did Mariah Carey, a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he prolific. He prolific and, you know, his work is, it speaks for itself when you start Googling him and pulling it up. But after the Trackster mm -hmm. video, mm -hmm. the one we did the He Got That Good Ski Franchise video, mm -hmm. That to me, in my podcast, people, I never mentioned exactly which video. I, yeah. I mentioned your name. Yeah. But the He Got That Good video was my transition okay. from behind the scenes videographer to music video editor. Oh. Because I remember you had a professional company do the edit for the music video. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you brought me the footage and I recut it and I showed you my version. Oh, you know what? Okay, there, now, was, there was two versions of that so video. So I shot both videos back to back. Yeah. They was almost like days apart, if not the day apart. If they was... They were really close to each other. It yeah. was like the next day or like I skipped a day and then shot a video or mm -hmm. something. So yeah, so Take It Slow was tracks to... Uh, and B-Lo from Do It Down on that. Yep. Um, B-Lo was on the way having to turn himself in to jail. He did the appearance um, up in that video and then shortly after that he went and did some time in jail. But um, Take It Slow was cold, bro. I was trying to prove something on Take It Slow. Mm -hmm. And that was the one where the steady cam wasn't working yeah, with Edward's yeah. scissor hands. <laughs> all, the, all the different things was going wrong. Me and Traxta got into it and shit. Traxta, dope ass creative. Um, and to be honest, I was being lazy. I was I, I wanted to do something grand, but I wasn't doing all of the work that went along with being grand. So shout out to Traxta because he actually pushed me to be better on that video. Mm. Um, and I got to see that. And I got to see how imperfect the production is. Oh yeah. Because when you're learning the theory of film, you're like, yeah, and you have everything organized. And nah. But the story, <laughs> yeah. Because the story, the way they the way that the song was, it was easy to dictate what the video was. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like an abstract video. I was right. able to choreograph what's going on with the words visually as to what was going on right in front of it. So yeah. it, was a, it was a little mini movie. Yeah. It's pretty much my only directing style. I'm kind of one trick pony. I don't I don't really do the abstract joints. I'd like shit to have a beginning middle and end and make sense or whatever so uh so we did that and then we did he got that good and it was a time where i was trying to push my filmmaking to another level mm -hmm. um i did the spike lee hitchcock shot i remember that and uh he got that good yep yep you know what i'm saying that one with whiskey flowing through with his with his mink oh, i remember that this shit was that. hard this shit was hard now we got to figure out how to show y'all this shit too because yeah well, like, we'll pull it up for sure and it that, was next level like to pull this shit off bro I remember, and, and we had the jib, because we had Kurt DP yeah, in it. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to Kurt. Kurt Brandstetter. And I got to see all the, that piece of gear. And I remember doing, the, we did it behind the scenes. We made the DVD for Ski. Yeah, yeah. The multi-layer DVD. Man, if y'all see, first this, time working man, on the see project. this DVD Ski had, y'all gonna roll, man. This shit was cold. Just the packaging was cold. The packaging was cold. And I remember because I had seen packaging on a skate video. Yeah. And I showed it to you and I was like, it has to be this good with the multi. It wasn't just an open. It was nah, like a three layer. We ordered three this layer, shit and we had yeah. this shit so cold. Yeah. Nick B did the photography. Shout out Nick Brzezinski. Yeah. You know, it's crazy shit. how many people are prolific now. Yeah. That we were all just shorties back then. Yeah. Like. And, and I got to get shot. I got to get shout outs on, on all of them too. Because yeah. like um, Nick B, a dope ass uh, filmmaker, videographer, yeah. videographer, whatever you want to call him. He dope as hell. Um, GL Joe, 
GL Joe yeah. was your homie that was <laughs> went Brazil to get lazy and didn't want to edit my shit. I used to go um where the fuck well he he stayed not too far from the Cermak building. Pilsen. Like, like yeah, Pilsen yeah. area and shit. I go pull up on him and have him cut my videos and shit. He cut uh, my Chief Keith video too. He fucked it up too. It was out of sync. <laughs> Keith manager, Keith Nim was mad as fuck. It was Keith's wor first World Star video at the top of World Star. Um, no shit. Monster, yeah. The monster video, I remember the that. Monster video, monster video, yeah. It's crazy because, like, Nick B has been a touring videographer, shooting up everybody. GL Joe did the cool kids and started creative directing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, literally, we all of us. Yeah, GL Joe, yeah, yeah. GL Joe did the cool kids Black Mag video, which was, yeah. which was huge. And. One of the cool kids used to film with us on 24-7 Hip Hop with Rano. It's crazy. I remember how he, how he how he stopped filming? Yeah, it's, it's it's Mikey Rocks and it's, what is it? Yeah, and Chuck. And Chuck, yeah, okay, Chuck remember, English. So I, Chuck English, Chuck English used to be part of our film crew. That's yes. so fucking crazy. That's yeah. so, this before he was a rapper, or he was a rapper then and we didn't even acknowledge him as a rapper. But do you remember what yeah. happened with him breaking his foot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Brazil had these fucking skates, right? And um, we used to shoot for this show, 247 HH uh, Hip Hop. It's still on. 247 uh, HH. .com. Which was crazy because I got yeah. to meet all the celebrities. We got to interview Rick Ross, T.I., Busta Rhymes, everybody. It was everybody. dope. It, yeah. was, dope. it yeah. was dope. We we interviewed every dope rapper that came through the Chicago market from like 05 to 07 or something. It was crazy. So we used to meet all these rappers. We used to shoot it with the DVX tapes. And we always trying to innovate everything that we shot. Yeah, we always trying try to crush the blacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. We was trying to edit in camera and shit. We was, we was trying to be dope. We was ahead of our time with that shit. So anyway, Brazil rides skates, fucking inline roller skates. So he grabbed these inline roller skates. He got a mini DVX camera. You feel me? And... We shooting Rhymefest rapping. Is he rapping? Yeah, it, it was Rhymefest and it was some other guy from BET who won the freestyle championship or something, but I was filming it with my skates. Yeah, but it was, yeah. yeah. So Rhymefest is the dude that wrote Jesus Walks yeah. and like used to win all the rap battles and shit. Shout out Rhymefest. Like, he became like a politician and shit later and all of that. But uh, back then, um, yeah. he spitting his freestyle and Brazil uh, did a wrap around shot in the in the it was dope it's downtown like it's um, like in the alley or something yeah, yeah like we right off of michigan avenue and it's, it's it's a dope ass view and shit and you wrapped around 360 around him filming him and shit and it was just it was cold so chuck english is watching brazil do this shit chuck english doesn't ride skates he rolls skateboards so chuck english tries to do a brazil type shot and breaks his fucking leg on a skateboard trying to do a Brazil shot. I can't, I can't make this up. And then with up. his broken leg, he decided to finally focus on his music and thus came to Cool Kids. You feel me? Yeah.